welcome back to the Dreamcast. I am your host, Denise Walsh. I combine science, scripture, and stories that will inspire you to dive deep, break through your own personal glass ceiling, and design a life of your dreams. Denise Walsh, thank you so much for being on Vroom Vroom Veer, and welcome to the show. How's it going? Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. So, okay, you are at deniswalsh.com. You've got a podcast called Dreamcast. I think I got called it right. Dreamcast. Dreamcast. You got it the right. Podcast. Yep. That's awesome. So, talk a little bit about what you've got going on in your podcast, your business, your website, your blog. Give us the lowdown. All of it. Yes. All of it. All right. Well, thanks again for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, yeah. So I have been in an entrepreneur for 11 years. 11 years. And, cool. And I'm now kind of making just a shift in terms of, um, I feel like I've, I'm making a veer. I sure am. <laughs> um, and I'm combining kind of all of the lessons I've learned throughout the years with being a clinical psychologist and leading a team. And We can talk about um, that. Yeah, we've got, yeah, it'll be good. So all of the experience that I have, I was like, I need a way to get this information out easily. And so that is where the Dreamcast came from. And my, my, uh, I guess my vision, my like, my holy discontent, meaning like this thing I just feel like so compelled to share mm. is that most people, if you were to rate, okay, rate your life on a scale of one to 10, and we've got seven areas of life. So friends, family, finances, business, uh, giving back and hobbies, health. So seven areas, and you rate them on a scale of one to 10. What I have found throughout my years of working with people is that most people rate themselves a four and they don't and, and like they're okay with that we kind of settle we get stuck we don't really realize that we can get better that life can actually be awesome mm. and so dreamcast is saying okay guys we really we can have a 10 in all areas of life and i so believe that and so i'm i'm casting vision for people all day like long it. yeah and uh and saying all right let's wake up and and go get what we want and create a life that we're proud of that reminds me a lot of this uh one of the guys that I got into as a blogger, he's like a self-help blogger. His name is Steve Pavlina. And uh, I went to a lot of his workshops uh, and he did this exercise. Exactly what you just said, right? He said like, yep. uh, okay, so you write down all those ratings, right? And then he gets to the end and he says, okay, so anything that you, that you rated below seven, renumber a one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And anything that you that you numbered a seven, go ahead and change it into a ten, right? And I was like, okay. So now do this again and say what sucks and what doesn't suck. <laughs> You're right, because most yeah. people will, will say four to seven, like it's okay. Right. Okay is unacceptable. Right. Uh huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I I share that vision. Uh, I think, and I also wanted to share that. Um, I did a bachelor's degree in uh, psychology a couple of years okay. back. Uh -huh. And uh, and basically, you did a bachelor's degree in psychology, too. So uh, I, let's compare notes. Um, you went on and, you know, probably got a doctorate or a master's degree, one or the other. Um, I didn't because in my experience, going through the bachelor's degree was enough to know that I didn't really want to do psychology. <laughs> 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 um, it was just... So the, the field, the field of endeavor, the industry, whatever you want to call it of psychology, um, is very much focused on getting people unwell to normal or good. It's like mm -hmm. from like sick, unhealthy to okay. And I mm -hmm. was thoroughly uninterested. I'm not that, that that's not good work, right? I just don't want to do it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more interested in what you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm talking to those people that are, you know, functioning and, and okay. And then moving from good to awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, and I got my master or I got my bachelor's in psychology, um, in Michigan and then went to Chicago area at Wheaton and got my master's. And my first job was in a community mental health. And, Although I was like super excited, like I really thought that this was going to be the best way that I served the world was to help people like right. better themselves and all of these things. I was working at the end of the day with people who didn't really want help in a system that couldn't help them. 
Right. Yes. And it was, I, I mean, I, it and was. And you're bogged down with all ugh. these like laws and the DSM and this code and billing and, and exactly. all this it was stigma, more about, stigmatism. And yeah, it's, it's it, not what you thought you were going into. No, it, it was more about policy, paperwork and procedure than it really right. was about people. And right. I got burned out quick. <laughs> yeah, it's broken. I mean, yeah. some of the folks working in psychology are amazing. I don't want to, it's just as a system. It's, it's all sort of like, it's, what is it? It's, what do they call it? It's just like all pathologized, right? It's yeah. all like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, right, you're exactly. Here, well, and that's the thing right. is you're focusing on the, on the, the sickness Correct. rather than focusing on the health right. Right. and focusing on even beyond that, like thriving and what your ideal life would look like and who are you called to be? And so, yeah. I, I mean, I got into the field because I really wanted to impact people. And then my dream slowly started to die. Right. This is <laughs> not I what I signed up for. What exactly. happened? Where did all those yeah. dreams go? Right. Yes. So, okay. So we shared that same rah, rah, rah with the field yeah. of psychology. Okay. We can move on. Okay. So what, what happened? What was the catalyzing story to get you out of that job? Oh, yeah. So I was in the job for about five years. Okay. And, and, you know, the first two years is a learning curve. I'm, you know, I'm in my honeymoon phase. I finally have a real job. Yeah. You're making money. You're paying off your you're debt. Making Things money. are good. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're you like, get to play oh, on the weekend. Dear. Uh, this is not what I, and then I became a zombie, you know, I, I right. really became this, um, living for the weekends, not really engaging in my life, feeling tired all of the time, overwhelmed, mm. underpaid, all of those things. And so I was, I stayed in this stuck place where I didn't like where I was, but I didn't know what else to do. Right. And I think so many of us stay here because it's comfortable. At least I know it. Like, at least I know the suckiness. Yes. This is, <laughs> this is there, shitty that I know. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Over there, I don't know. Is it going to be worse? Is it going to be better? I don't know. So I stayed. Um, as and I as had, most people do. Yeah. I do. I think, yeah. I mean, I know people that uh, graduated with me that are in their same job they hate for a decade. Right. Yes. So you got lucky. Something, something woke you up enough, shook yes. you up enough to... Take the leap, as they say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And 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 for me, I was um, in a small group at my church, and I got introduced to a network marketing company, and we said yes. And even though it was totally not anything I ever would have expected to do, wow, we've been okay. top leaders with them for eleven years. So, within about three years, we were my husband and I were both able to quit our jobs, and so now we've been full time entrepreneurs, traveling the world, um, training our team, and and you know. Casting this vision for so many other people. And like the whole reason I got into psychology was because I wanted to love people and help them be better. And I feel like over the past 11 years, I've been able to do that in just a wow. way I never expected. Yeah. Neat. So was there like a, like a shakeup event before that, before that quit happened? Was it scary? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Walk us I mean, through it. What, what were what what happened? You know. So yeah, we were we had been building our business on the side because that's the beautiful thing. Good. Of, yeah, yeah. Know, that's business. a good idea. You can, yeah. Yeah, you do it on the side. You can do it in your spare time, part time. You start, you start um, working so, it as the side hustle. As the, exactly as right. It is. It is, and which means we didn't have kids at the time, which is probably a big bless. Well, which was a, ended up being a, a blessing because they're kind of their own job. But yes. we now <laughs> we, yeah. we were able to do from five to midnight a lot of times, working our business, traveling on the weekends, and 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 running it. And there got um, there was several points where we thought, oh my gosh, we are wasting so much time at work. Like when you okay. really think about right, right, that makes sense. Can I? What can I? There's no ladder to climb here. Do I, need only... this, do I need this crutch anymore or can we survive without it? Uh, yeah. yeah. And like, I'm only going to get maybe a 3% raise a year, maybe if we're lucky, like there's no ladder to climb. There's no next step. This is just, so we got to that place where we thought I am wasting time at work when I've got this side hustle that's growing. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, I mean, we were making five figures a month before we ended up quitting our jobs because we still had that fear of what if. You know, yeah, when if. you were probably talking about like, uh, oh, but how, what do we do about insurance, right? Yeah. Or maybe you quit and I'll work, right? The, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get we would, it. We would draw straws. We like flipped a coin to see who would quit first. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> my husband ended up quitting first. He quit six months before me. So and he then, lost, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you he, know. <laughs> he was an aerospace engineer. He worked right. at um, corporate wow. America, you know, aerospace cubicle Aerospace engineers land. make a lot of money. Yeah, that's, and that's they're hard bored out of their minds. From, yes, they are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I worked with a lot of those guys. I was in the Air Force 20 years, so I know. Yeah. Yes, they, they deal with uh, all kinds of mind-numbingly dull, stupid political crap. So, yes, yes. I get that. Yeah, so that, that was his world. So he quit first, and then six months later I quit, and we ended up going to Australia for six weeks and built our business there and wow. came back, and we were full-time um, and we've been full time now for nine years. You know, we're able to do it together, meaning we've got a, an aligned goal, which I think has been really helpful for us uh, to be focused in the same direction. Uh, working, you know, we both do different parts of the business, which has been really cool. My husband's more of a digital marketer because of his IT background, and he right. was able to connect the um, internet world with marketing. And then I'm the people person. So I'm the one who trains their team and travels and connects with people. And, and so we've been able to kind of marry both of our skills and our business. And it's, it's been really fun. I have to get you to talk to my wife. Okay. <laughs> so here's, you, you know, and when I saw the title of your book, I was like, oh man, this is, this is like, how can I get her to like talk to my wife or have my wife somehow magically read this book? I uh-huh. figured something out about like my wife. I don't know if this is like a universal thing, but anything I say is automatically dumb. But if somebody else tells her the same thing, it's genius. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever I, run I, into this phenomena? Yeah, I can agree with that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've experienced that in my life. Mm-hmm. So the name of your book was Retire Your Husband, right? Mm-hmm. So I've noticed these things, right? So my wife loves retail sales. So when we first got married, she was working in Hawaii at Louis, Louis Vuitton Boutique, in uh, mm-hmm. Alimon, what? I can't remember the name of the shopping center, but one of the fancy, fancy, fancy places in Hawaii, outside of Waikiki, and she was always like monthly sales top, top monthly sales girl, right? Mm-hmm. And and so she just has one of those salesy personalities, where me, you know, I'll talk people out of buying stuff that that you know they want to buy from me. I am like the opposite of salesperson. (laughs) Right, right. You don't really need this. It's too expensive. Go live your (laughs) life and meditate. You know, that you don't want me around when sales is happening. (laughs) Right. But, you know, I've I've seen like uh she likes to sell like uh Japanese books and videos and things on eBay and she Mm -hmm. just really loves it and um I know if we were to do something like that, maybe like a combination of eBay, Amazon, something sales, Mm -hmm. I could help her do all the computery junk and, you know, and she's really good at wrapping stuff up and, and then I can even drive it to the post office. (laughs) That would would be fun. (laughs) You know, I can, I can see the whole thing in my brain. She just doesn't, she's not there yet in the, um, she still thinks she needs a job, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, that's that's yeah. that's my entrepreneurship to cross. is a it, it is. I grew up in a a employee world. You know, my right. dad was an accountant, my mom was a stay at home mom. So the whole world of entrepreneurship was totally it's outside boring. of my realm of thinking, right. and it is a new brain cell. It is, yes. And I think if you're gonna if you're gonna attack it, and and you only have like one person in a in a marriage that's like into it and the other one's like either like okay go for it go ahead you know do your thing and then right right? that's not gonna work it's not it might work if if that one person is all in 100 percent a type personality and um but like not with me because my wife is the a type i'm if if i had a type i'd probably be z we are (laughs) (laughs) do i have to work i don't really want to work you know um but anyway yes well, and it's true. You, in order to be, you know, in, in you entrepreneurship, to, to be successful, quote unquote, or to create momentum and, a, you know, get it build a business, a you do energy. have to be a bit obsessed. Yes. So <laughs> if you're not upset, you know, if, if one person is obsessed in their business and the other person doesn't quite get it. They're it just is, like me. It's, yeah. It's a little trickier. <laughs> right. Well, you know, and I know because I tried. And basically mm-hmm. her attitude was he'll be done. Eventually he'll be done. 
<laughs> so she was basically just, She's just waiting, waiting it out. It. Right. She was yep. waiting it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm thinking if it's if it's going to happen at all, maybe it won't, and that's okay. Um, but if it were happen at all, it would be originating from her idea, as yes. like I can do this. This is fun. I'm already doing it, and that's happening. I mean, she does have a hobby, and you know we've got boxes all over the house, and and eBay is is likes us. You know, so it's happening. Uh-huh. You know, it's just like. I'd like to pour gas on it <laughs> right. Right. so she can quit the job and we can hang out more during the day, just like what yeah. you're talking about, you know, and yeah. have fun anyway. So, okay. So you've been doing this business now for what do you say? Nine years. So when did you decide to start the podcast and the so, website and make this current veer? Yeah. So the, the full time for nine years, current about 11. And, and so basically I really wanted a way to connect with my team and beyond all over the world and, and not have to travel. So the podcast started with that. I've got two small kids now, ages four and seven, and I love what I do, but I didn't really want to be gone all the time. So the Dreamcast Mm. was started to add value really just to add value to my team and add value beyond. And I've, and I've been able to really up level my network by meeting amazing people like you right. uh, to be, you know, to, to be guests on my show and, um, and to help me get out there. So the Dreamcast started in January. So I've only been oh, doing it a wow. few months. Congratulations. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. And you know, I thought about it for several years, right. Until I finally said, Google, how do you start a podcast? <laughs> Google's so awesome. And, and it tells yeah. you the answer, too. It's so awesome. It does. And, and you know, my husband, because he's the IT guy, I think I always waited for him to tell me, okay, let's do it. This is what you need. And it, since it's my baby and I'm the one that's excited about it, he never did that. So I had right. to figure it out myself. Right. But now <laughs> I'm even sometimes. more proud. <laughs> right, right. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I see that you're trying to do like, uh, something more than me on frequency. How, how often are you publishing? I am doing an interview every single Monday. Okay. Just that's, so that's what I'm doing. Yep. Yes. An interview every single Monday. And then, um, every other week once like on one week, it will be a solo episode. Okay. And then the following week will be a replay Friday where I replay um, an interview that I did. So for example, your show could air on mine as well. Oh, wow. So that's been really cool. That's fun. So it's like a cross cross pollinate kind of idea. It is. It is. It is especially too, because, um, oh what I love about the interviews is that they're also, it's my story, but it's all a little different. And so people pull out different things and then sure. it's just another way to connect audiences. No, for real. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's a good idea. I like Thank that. Thank you. Yeah. I learned it from someone else and then just did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all do. That's, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. There's this other idea and I'll run this by you because you're a podcaster too. Um, somebody, uh, I'm in this uh, podcaster's paradise. Have you ever heard of that? It's no, the, have. have you ever heard of John Lee Dumas? He does um, this show called uh, EO Fire, Entrepreneur on Fire. It's okay. a really popular podcast in the business yeah. world. But um, so anyway, I joined his group, I think, in 2014. Uh, and he just did this. Uh, every once in a while, he'll do a webinar that is interesting to me. And it was about um, ideas to sort of like uh, make your podcast better and or grow your audience. And one of the things that I liked was... Um, you do, you go to like, have you ever gone to iTunes and you see other podcasts pop up? It'll uh-huh. like, you, you listen to this show, these other shows you might like too. Uh-huh. So what you do is you find those podcasters, you email them and say, Hey, let's try this. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about your show at the end of my show. Right. And then you just do like this little promo for your show and you put it on somebody else's show. Where you oh. cross pollinate, yes, yep. because most, collaboration, yeah, yeah. Well, and then the thing is, is most advertisers don't want to be after you put it after your outro, 
after okay. your outro music. Most people have hung up by that point, so advertisers aren't interested in that space anyway. But a lot of people listen anyway because they're not able to hit stop because right, they're right. driving or something, right? It's happened to me before. It yeah. happens all the time. It happens to all of us all the time, so you listen anyway, right? So I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. I should do that. I haven't tried it yet, but I want to. So anyway. All right. Well, let's be the first one. We'll collab. I'll do one for you. You do one for me. See? We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Let's do it. it. It'll be a test. Yeah. Test one. I, I'm an action taker. I like think later and take action and figure it out. Do, <laughs> do first, way. think later. Is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like Get it. Get it on the calendar and then figure out how to do it. That's perfect. <laughs> so I wanted to say uh, we're, I also grew up in Michigan. So a lot of people don't know that, you know, so, and I think that's neat. Um, and then also I thought, um, I was trying to figure out um, your your nickname uh, on your email was Nessie. So then I was like, Hot, wait a minute. Nessie's from Scotland and Walsh is not Scottish. <laughs> What's well, going on here? Well, unfortunately, yeah. When ne- Denise Walsh was taken, but Nisi Walsh, that's what oh, they... Oh, it's Nisi. Nisi, yep. So the... Nisi, okay. Um, you know, the three-year-olds who would call my name would say Nisi. <laughs> So that kind of stuck. Do people, your friends, stuck, yep. your friends and family, still call you Nisi? Yep, I've got a you know a handful that, um, you know, I've obviously known a long time who call me that. That's cool. That yeah. I just wanted to get the story. <laughs> There's always a story. There's always there? a story. That's right. So I, I I was checking out some of your shows, and and you know if you if you can't talk about it, that's fine because some of these are going to be you know you're not necessarily the expert. But uh, I mean, at least you have a passing interest. Um, so one of those things that I pulled out that I liked um, that we might be able to talk about is choosing meaning over money. Um, mm-hmm. I, that meaning is like um, I listened to another podcast recently. I think it was with uh, on Tim Ferriss's show with Terry mm-hmm. Crews. And uh, and he laid out these three calls, um, calls to achievement, calls to power and call to meaning. OK, and those are like you've got either one, two or three of those that are dominating your life right now. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and you can see those. Right. So I guess Trump would be called the power. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, and the Dalai Lama probably called to meaning. Right. <laughs> Mother Teresa called the meaning. Right. She took a vow of poverty. So meaning if any of those three made any sense to me, uh, it was meaning. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, OK, I want to hear. Denise's thoughts on choosing meaning over money. What does that mean to you? Yeah, absolutely. So meaning over to mon- over money truly just means to me when I'm focusing on adding value to others, the money comes um, throughout our whole careers, whether it be in psychology or with our business, we were really just focused on number one, like identifying our passion and purpose and speaking and living into that. So with my team and with, I was goal focused, like I wanted to hit promotions and I'm a, I am t- probably type a, oh, for a sure. goal getter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I like to keep ma- t- taking steps and making movement. Um, but my eyes were never really on the money. My mind and my heart were really on adding value to people. And, right. and living Helping. in my passion right, and right. Pa- you know, when you're inspired, it just like overflows. And so my heart was there and I found that is that the money took care of itself. You know, the business yeah, grew before, yeah. and the money will come. Um, and, and it's joyfully, you know, cause you're living in your purpose and passion the whole time. Right. And it doesn't feel icky or salesy, any of that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not like, ha ha, I screwed them over. Ha ha, I got their money. <laughs> yeah. No, you're... it's like I helped them. And, exactly. And, and <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, and you, you know that so many other. This whiplash thinking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when I got more of their money. <laughs> well, and if you get to the top of that way, then there's no way you're going to feel good about it. And there's no way it's going to last. That's well, I don't know. I mean, there are well, a lot of snidely whiplashes out there that seem they're doing they seem to be doing just fine. Right. But it just, just doesn't feel good to me that, and you, you know. Well, I do know a lot of people who are rich and miserable. So That's true. That's I would true. rather be rich and joyful. Good for you. <laughs> me too. No, I'm with you. You know, I you know, the thing it it obviously works. You know, pers- have you ever heard of uh, Scott Adams? Uh he does I- the Dilbert cartoon. 
Uh, oh, yeah, I know Dilbert. Okay, everybody knows Dilbert. Well, yeah, it turns Dilbert. out that Scott Adams is, you know, now rich and in his 60s, and he's kind of bored. But he's also really into Tony Robbins and... Um, and persuasion techniques. He actually studied hypnosis when he was younger. So he considers himself, yes, a master persuader. Um, and not like he's using like a master persuasion for his evil plan. What he's doing now is explaining what Trump is doing <laughs> from the eyes mm. of a master persuader. Mm. Um, it's fascinating stuff, right? Um, I don't know where the hell I was going with it. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's just about like what I was t telling you. Persuasion works both ways. It works it works for if you're going to be, you know, like just about power or just about achievement, but it also works for meaning too. You know, you can do it. It's almost like fire. You can use fire to cook a meal or to, you know, burn your enemies to the ground. It's neutral, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's it's true. I I've never thought of it as um, persuasion, but when I'm casting vision mm. or when I'm, you know, I, I'm saying, okay, you're a four, but you could be a 10, like, let's go to a 10, you, are you know, there is a little them. bit yeah. of exactly. Yeah. Oh, of course. And, and, and we're doing it in a good way, of course, cause we're helping people get better. Oh yeah. Uh, so it, that's fun. It is, you know, and there's all kinds of persuasion, you know, even if you're not interested in using persuasion, I think, uh, and this is something I found on uh, Scott Adams' blog. If you just Google like Scott Adams' persuasion reading list, um, it's good for defense. So <laughs> you read all these these books on persuasion, and you find out why people are always trying to give you stuff. Ah, uh, that's a persuasion technique. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I think it was uh, the guy that did uh, was in charge of uh, Gillette figured out that if he gave away one razor blade, then people bought his razors because <laughs> they felt obligated. It's, it's a, like a rule in our psychology, right? Um, and there's all of these rules in psychology, and that's what persuasion techniques are designed to do is to sort of like get under the, your, your conscious mind and, uh, and click a switch and have you react mm -hmm. and buy some shit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And or, yeah. or and or click a button or do some other automatic reaction and and if you're not doing the defensive moves then you're probably buying stuff you don't want. <laughs> I know I've stopped I've, buying a lot of crap I don't want. I found business is absolutely connected to psychology and marketing too. Oh, you yeah, know people sure. ask me are you still using your degree and I'm like I work oh, with people. Course. Yes I do. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's huge. It's hugely, you know, I, I don't know how much time you've spent, uh, you know, looking at persuasion or these sort of like cognitive biases, but they're definitely, people are using them on you. So you might as well, at least if you don't want to be offensive, you know, try to use right. them for you at least know what's going on. So, you know, you're, you got your shields up. Okay. Enough on persuasion. <laughs> so talk a little bit about, um, storytelling secrets for creating a connection online because i love telling stories you already know yes. right yes yeah so how well, do you and use that in your business so i mean as you know people connect with stories and when we're telling a story we want to tell less facts for example when we're at thanksgiving dinner and you smell the sweet potatoes mm. and you pass it to the right and there's the gloss of the brown sugar over it you know you want to create a picture in people's minds mm -hmm. of what they're experiencing mm -hmm. and i don't know about you but i just got hungry right and so i think <laughs> like that's the idea right is that you're evoking all of the senses so telling a story with a beginning middle of an end yeah, that connects right, right. with people's emotions so you're taking them on a journey mm -hmm. and what i find that is you can you can do that through any medium whether it be a podcast or facebook live or uh, you know online text or whatever you can pull people in and the goal is for them to always say mm, me too i like that. i want that i want to be a part of you know because the, they're connecting with you on some level right you know i learned this other thing that's sort of I think it might be related to storytelling and, and sort of like our, a psychological need or want mm -hmm. maybe, um, to, 
um, sort of like open and close these question, a question answer thing. So the, like, I think the most basic form of storytelling is I ask a question and then you answer, right? That's why we like these things. <laughs> but uh, this other thing that I just learned, um, is on NPR, they always are constantly doing, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. So then, uh, we can, we can illustrate the point later on. I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, neuroscience, um, from Dr. Carolyn Leaf and talk about how anxiety leads to toxic thoughts, uh, DNA changes and damage, but not yet. I want to finish this thought about storytelling. <laughs> See, so what I did there is, is I opened up a loop and I teased something that's coming in the future. And then later on, we'll talk about it. Right. So people now are waiting for the end of the story. Does that make sense? Right. Right. <laughs> I'm right. trying to do this on my shows now. <laughs> That's good. Well, and it, it's that little teaser, but you're it's right. You, so like in my show, if, if a show lasts an hour, you could probably do this like three or four times every show. At the beginning, you say, hey, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about neuroscience um, and anxiety, toxic thoughts and DNA and damage DNA changes and damage. We're going to talk about that later, but first, uh, you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so I've heard that with the, with the sales technique, you say, before we get started, I'm going to tell you a bit of my story right. and then you kind of go into your story, but they, they don't know you actually already have started. Right. <laughs> well, it, it, it's everywhere. I mean, in the air force, I can give you an air force briefing right? The Air Force would always do this. This is the, the typical story, uh, the typical format, uh, uh, more like an outline. It was like, first, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to tell you. And then I'm going to tell you what I told you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's it. Yeah. And then you're done. <laughs> Show's yeah. over. Right. And hopefully you remember because you've heard it three times. Right. 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 So and th this other technique that Scott Adams does, um, and this is, do you like water? Of course. Do you drink a lot of water? I do. I do drink a lot of water. Do, are, do you have water with you right now? I do. Do you? Let's do a simultaneous <laughs> sip, shall we? Okay. Because my mouth is a little dry. And this sure. is some clean filtered water and it's really good. Mmm. That was good. <laughs> yep. Yep. Right. <laughs> so what we did there was another persuasion technique of uh, associating something good with me. <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, yeah. And, and it's important to make the sip and the ah. <laughs> He's amazing, right? He does his with coffee. So the name of his podcast is... Uh, uh, it's something about uh, morning coffee with Scott Adams. So every, every, the beginning of every show is he does this doop, 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 doop. And then he says, Hey everybody, let's have some delicious coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very demonstrative, you know, and he's on video too. So, and then he takes his simultaneous sip and he goes, ah, and then he'll say, Oh, and by the way, I just read something that says coffee is also good for you as well. Now moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about uh, neuroscience and Dr. Carolyn Leaf. Yes. So the story here is I grew up, you know, I went into the psychology world. So I had been teaching cognitive behavioral therapy, the mm. importance of your thoughts. Right. You know, I'd, I'd been teaching a lot of these things um, throughout my years. And of course, leading a team and helping people to dream bigger and work for it and kind of help light their fire. Like we're all about personal development and positive thinking and things like that. Um, and so a couple of years ago, I was introduced to Dr. Caroline Leaf, who is basically a brain scientist. She's been studying the brain for since the eighties. Okay. And we, I went to a conference with her where, by the way, she talks a million miles a minute, mm. but she's like, your brain can handle it. So don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, we're all, a lot of us are doing that. You know, you're, yeah. you're like, uh, what is it? I think you can four X podcasts and your brain yeah. will still pick it up. Yeah. 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 It's true. All this information is coming at us. And, yes. and so she's like, don't worry about it. Don't, you know, your brain can handle it. And she talks about the research that she has done 
um, in this field. And so basically neuroscience is saying that the way that you think, your thought patterns, physically change the neurons in your brain. You know, mm. you're creating, you either have fear-based thoughts, which change your neurons to be more like dead cactuses in your brain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or Wow, that's a good visual. Yeah, like... <laughs> Or, or you could choose faith-based thoughts, like they say, fear ver- or faith versus fear, or whatever. So you can either choose fear or faith, more positive, focused, um, you know, life-giving, affirming. What do I want? Type th- of thoughts. And what happens in your brain when you think differently and choose to think differently is that the brain physically changes. There's more neuron connections. It's like a willow tree, like a blossoming flower in wow. your brain. You're good at these visuals. You should have a and- YouTube channel. and it makes a big difference and so the way that you think it's kind of like just creating new thought patterns impacts the physiology like the physicality of our brain Mm. and the and the way that our neurons um interact with each other and fire which then also impacts our our um, emotions, mm-hmm. which impact our hormones, which impact, I mean, there's a lot of, it's kind of like the, it actually the changes effect. your DNA, right? Yes, it damages it DNA, does. right? Because I mean, at the end of the day, we like your DNA is, it can be turned on and off. And so the way you treat your body, the way you think can turn on and off mm. DNA, different DNA. And so my goodness, when I started learning this stuff and I'm like, this is not just positive psychology stuff. This is backed with brain science. Right. Um, it really was exciting because, I, I mean, it, it just took it a whole nother level. It's like, this isn't just nice to do. <laughs> it's really no, impact. no, you're right. And, the, and, it, um, and it impacts the world around you as well oh, because sure. um, your and I know you're into, world will you're, change. You're into prayer and you're into gratitude. Yeah. And both of those are linked to um, positive psycho- psychological and physiological benefits. Um, have you ever done any sort of mindfulness meditation? Yes. Yep. I do. Um, I work to, I say try. I, most days, you know, not perfect, but most days I do Headspace in the morning, which oh, is uh, yes. a good app for yeah, yeah. someone who's kind of getting started. Is that Andy, the British guy? Yeah, I love his voice. Yeah, I know. He's got the <laughs> best voice. I know. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a really good app. Yes. The other thing that I uh, loved was Tim Ferriss was talking to, now I'm blanking on the, the guest's name, but I'll, I'll remember it and put it in the show notes. But anyway, not important. Um, but they were talking about a, a particular meditation, and it reminded me a lot of the gratitude sort of exercise. But this was more of the um, – the idea was was if you're having a hard time thinking good thoughts towards our, yourself, for whatever reason, I have a, a problem – imagining nice loving thoughts to myself right Mm -hmm. but if i try to do that for somebody like my wife or if i try to think loving thoughts about my best friend scott or my mom or my sister or my brother or you know pick anybody that you you know love and you want good things for and you just think those thoughts you know i I want my mom to be have a good day and and for her to be loved and and feel good and be supported today. And then once you have that thought, think, now, wouldn't it be okay for her to think those thoughts towards me? And just imagine her thinking those thoughts about me. It works. (laughs) That's very cool. (laughs) For whatever reason, that works, right? Whereas if I just tried to do it just for myself, I would feel icky. I don't know why. There must be something, it must be martyr syndrome or something. I don't know what. (laughs) Well, it is interesting when you think, oh, if I'm feeling this way towards the people I love, I bet they're feeling that way towards me as well. It it just follows, right? You already know, I know my mom loves me. That's right. uh, That's easy. You know, that's not in debate, right? It just, um, when you try to think the lovey thoughts towards yourself, it seems silly. I don't know. <laughs> but if it's coming from another person, that's okay. So I, right. thought, I thought that was neat. The other thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, have you ever heard of a, a, a PhD, uh, Dr. Loretta Bruning? Oh, no, I haven't. She, uh, she's, uh, her website's called the Inner Mammal Institute. 
Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, um, her tagline on her website is, our ups and downs are caused by brain chemicals inherited from early earlier mammals. Her work has changed my life. <laughs> Mostly about, um, and I don't, you probably didn't experience this so much, um, but like when I first started like trying to uh, work from home, and blog or podcast or whatever, I was going through these long periods of not being around other people and I was going nuts. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, and then I learned from Dr. Bruning that that is because, you know, when we used to be, um, say like deer in a herd, uh, right. That Mm -hmm. if we got too far away from the, the, the other deer, we would think, we're going to get eaten by a lion and sometimes we would. <laughs> mm-hmm. So our old brain still thinks isolation means death and, and our body makes us feel that way, even if we know it's not true. So you have to like go be around people. You know, one thing that's connecting to what you're saying is it's really interesting. We used to think that stress was the major cause for sickness and disease. Right. And, um, you know, increased stress, increased cortisol, you know, going to the doctor, all of that. And and that's probably true. But what they're finding is that the um, even worse than stress in terms of health is loneliness. Right. Isolation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for and sure. Com- and community really is kind of like a prescription for <laughs> right. No, totally. for a lot of ailments these days. Right. Yeah. It's like we could, uh, we just need to make, have you, the thing that uh, really opened my eyes, uh, if everybody would Google uh, the rat park experiment, have you ever heard of this? Mm-mm. This is neat. So it's it's a bit long. So I'll I'll try to sum up. <laughs> Go ahead. So they were talk they were they were talking about um, addiction, and um, and they were trying to figure out if rats would always get addicted to heroin no matter what. Okay, so they set up this whole experiment. Um, and the first set of rats were totally isolated and they were given the opportunity to have some, some drug that would make them feel better. And they all got addicted to heroin. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. And then, and then they, and then they had a rat park where the rats were in a very stimulating environment with a lot of other rats and they had the same access to the drugs and they didn't get addicted. They occasionally went over there and went, oh, okay, Whoa, you know, but not addicted. They, mm-hmm. It was just not necessary, right? So it's like, what's really going on? It's it's the isolation that's right. the thing. It's not the heroin. I was that like, is- freaky. I was like, what? Because <laughs> that really yeah. applies to people too. Yeah. Well, it is. It's really interesting. It's when you don't feel like you belong somewhere, um, you can kind of run to those external means to to get that same feeling. Right. Right. Yes. And we all need those feelings for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not even that, you know, it's not like we're not talking about the hedonistic treadmill, that kind of thing. It's just if you're not around other folks, then you're going to feel bad and start getting sick and going wonky. Um, we have a biological need to, to see and interact with other people. Yeah. Well, and that's why on all of the movies where they're lost at sea or on a deserted Island, they pick something to be their friend. (laughs) (laughs) You're thinking of Wilson, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What a great movie. You're right. Yeah. You have to make up a friend, don't you? Uh. Yeah, it's either that or, well, you know, you, actually, you don't have a choice. Everybody's going to make a Wilson one way or the other, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so uh, as we before we wrap up, I, we've got about three minutes left before you need to leave. Um, I, if, if this is okay, I think it might work. It might not. But uh, can you remember the last time you cried tears of joy, say, like uh, with your kids or in your job or um, helping people grow? as you do. Um, it seems like a, um, a pretty interesting question. And if, if you want, I can share first. 
That is an interesting question. Absolutely. I do have one, but go ahead. Well, mine came watching the movie Dunkirk. No, not Dunkirk. Uh, Our Darkest Hour, Darkest Hour. Um, The movie about uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, Mm -hmm. Just the whole thing about him, you know, succeeding uh, in spite of all odds. (laughs) You know, how he just wouldn't quit, you know, and everybody was against him. I was just like, wow, you know, uh, I don't know if I I, I would have probably crumbled. But then again, I'm not Winston Churchill. That made me get a little weeby. Hey, there's something to be said about seeing people push through and and come on the other side. It's like that victory story. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure I had tons of, I mean, when you have children, you're... If you're not frustrated with them, you're usually pretty proud of them. Um, But just last week, I was traveling. I was in Dallas for a company event. And um, they are starting to let me do some of, not let me, they're giving me stage time essentially to do some of the things I love, which is um, exercises. I was trained with Jack Canfield and do like success principles Mm. stuff. And so I've got all these, I've learned a ton. So they give me some stage time. I had 20 minutes with some distributor, 300 distributors where I was able to take them through some exercises. And I I didn't expect to feel emotion when I was up there because of course you just practice your presentation. But when I was on stage and I had them do this exercise where they picked a partner and somebody they didn't know And they have to sit face to face, knees touching. Mm. And partner A simply asks the question, what do you want? 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 And so the other person just has to answer, you know, and at first you're like, a car, Uh, you know, (laughs) cup (laughs) copy. Yeah. But eventually you have to, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Eventually you have to get to some real raw stuff a real desire yeah i had them do this exercise for a minute okay a minute and there were tears all over the room wow and then they hug each other and they're like oh i mean they each did it for like a minute Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe a minute and a half but Mm -hmm. i actually had two and a half minutes slotted and i had to cut it because i you know couldn't go over um but a minute a minute and a half of of just this repeated question and there were tears all over the room and so it seems like forced eye contact almost too which it was it's which is good (laughs) it was powerful it was it is powerful it is huge i felt the emotion and i seriously that's when you're just like this is what I'm supposed to do. That like, worked. Oh my God. Yeah. It was amazing. Oh yeah. Those, that now those kinds of things happen to me when I was doing a lot of those self help workshops that it's sort of like why you go right? yeah. <laughs> for those. You moments. want those breakthroughs. You yeah. want those moments. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you, Denise. This has been a blast. I appreciate it. Uh, so you are at Denise Walsh.com. So how else can folks get in touch with you easily, easily, yeah, if you go to denisewalsh.com, I actually have a coupon for anybody that wants to put their email in 50% off my next project that's coming out in the next four to six weeks cool. called Dream Life. And it really is the whole, the whole process of deciding what you want and getting over all the junk and creating a Dream 10 life. Um, but then I'm on Facebook at Denise Walsh and then Instagram, the Denise Walsh. And I'd the love to Denise connect Walsh. with anybody there. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I Thank you, Jeff. It. Have a good one. Have a good one. Thank you so much for listening today. Head over to denisewalsh.com. Enter your email to subscribe to our list, and I'll be sending out an early bird special coupon. 50% off, in fact, of the Dream Life Workbook when it is launched in just a few months. So if you want to have first dibs, let's get your name on that list. Thanks again. I so appreciate you. And remember to dream big. Dream big.